Magnolia County has a lot going for it. Stunning natural beauty, abundant natural resources, a university that's rapidly becoming known as one of the best in the Midwest, Chuckles and his shuttle, and Bend, a city that is rapidly growing into a thriving community and has been showing no signs of slowing down. But one thing that it's missing is transit, and existing and potential residents have taken note. The lack of public transit has made car ownership basically mandatory, which has led to severe roadway congestion in some unexpected areas. And some residents have complained that the lack of affordable transportation options is the reason that there's an affordability crisis plaguing the region. And perhaps no entity feels this more acutely than the University of Superior, where students have been complaining that it's hard to get to and from campus. Further, they're saying that it's making the university increasingly unaffordable to attend. And because of this, the university has approached the county board and offered to fund up to three bus routes if a bus service were ever to be founded. And in a small community, news travels fast and the potential service begins to draw both support and opposition. For instance, James begins lobbying his representatives immediately because he knows that public transit will make higher density, higher margin projects more viable. And Jamila and Clearwater Southern love the idea because it will help them get their employees to and from work. Chuckles, on the other hand, hates the idea. His 20 taxis have been filled to the brim, and he's worried about fixed route transit eating into his sizable profits. And many rural residents fear that the introduction of transit will lead to further growth and further encroachment into their pristine rural landscapes. Discussion of public transit continues to progress until reaching a crescendo in July, when the creation of a regional transit authority, or RTA, comes to a vote. The RTA would own and operate transit within the region, and if founded, would have the authority to levy a half percent sales tax within its district boundaries to fund its services. And after a lengthy discussion that goes well into the evening, the RTA is approved by a vote of 11 to 9. Soon after, paperwork is completed to secure federal transit funding, and work begins to procure buses, build a bus depot, and build a new transfer facility. In this episode, we'll begin work to establish transit within the county. We'll build all of the required infrastructure needed for bus service, as well as create a few logical routes. We'll also expand Bend and add a new transfer facility where many routes will meet and where inner city service will be housed. And if you love public transit, hit the like button. And if you're more of a car person, hit the like button for that too, and let me know what you prefer down in the comments. Or leave an emoji of your preference for the sake of engagement. And without any further ado, let's jump right in. Hello, welcome back to Magnolia County. Now I know the focus of today's episode is building out a transit network, but we're gonna begin by planning out a neighborhood. And that might sound strange, but this neighborhood right here is going to be home to our bus station, which is where a number of our routes are going to meet up. So if we don't have a location for this, we won't actually be able to build out our transit network. So we'll begin by just laying out some roads and we're gonna do so in a fairly compact and tight way to mirror what we've done in downtown Bend. And we're gonna urbanize some of our highways so that they fit the context of what this area will be in the future. And I think that's where we'll actually begin. We're gonna begin by urbanizing the Superior Highway and extending Main Street up to this roundabout. Now this is an interesting project because the only entity that would be able to do this would be the city because there will likely not be urban development on either side of this road. So it's an interesting road. It would likely need a grant or something of that nature. The other interesting thing about this is we would look to urbanize this and then as we come over to this section likely have a two unit four lane road so that we still have four lanes all the way through here. That's not possible in City Skylines 2 with the roads we have available to us. So we're gonna need to take a little bit of a mulligan here. I'm gonna pause the game momentarily because we are going to upgrade this road and it's going to eliminate all of the buildings along here, which is not my preference, but I think it's what we have to do. Now to make this look similar to how it looked before, I had to rebuild a lot of what we've done here. And I've decided to add a couple of new paths in the back to improve pedestrian connectivity. We are going to look to slow traffic down through here, so we might as well build this out while we have the chance. And now we have a battle that we are about to begin. We've currently lost the name of Main Street, and this will be something that we deal with throughout this entire build. So I have actually taken a picture of the entire downtown Belmont so that I don't lose any names. So I have all the street names right in front of me, but if I miss renaming a street because the game renames it, let me know down in the comments and I will fix it in the next one. Now I wanna focus on this area and we are going to build out a bit of a grid that wraps around and tries to respect the topography. We don't wanna crowd the shore and we also don't wanna make it impossible to cross the river. But to be able to do that, we're gonna to have to purchase some tiles, and with those, we should be able to accomplish everything that we want to today. 
I'm gonna begin with some two lane roads and we're gonna use our parallel road tool. We'll increase our width as far as we can go with it. And we have to travel to the left if we want to have the roads go beneath us. If we were to go from the other direction, it would end up in the river. And I'm gonna back this out the full six units away from the coast. And we'll draw this in a couple of locations. And then I think the end of what we're gonna do today is going to be right about here. And we'll follow this contour. And now I wanna plan our bridge crossing. And our bridge crossing is gonna once again be in the narrowest place. So this is pretty close to the narrowest location, not completely the narrowest, but I think we're gonna be completely fine with that. And then I'm just gonna run this directly into here. Now, an interesting thing is we, we currently have a signalized intersection. I think that we should have a roundabout, but I kinda of wanna start thinking about other roundabouts, larger roundabouts. So let's go and purchase these within the roads menu in the progression tree. And now we finally have access to medium, large, and very large roundabouts. And the value of these is the larger roundabout should be able to handle more capacity than the smaller roundabout. So hopefully we would see fewer traffic jams because we have these larger roundabouts. Now I wanna build out these areas a little bit more. We're gonna go back into our parallel road tool and I'm going to snap to the edge of this and again, run this to the left. And this will be about where we turn this grid into the other one. We'll have a diagonal road or something that is our dividing line. But before we do any of that, I want to come back here and measure out our block width. And it looks like it's 18 units. So for all these blocks, we'll go 18 units. And with that, we've finished the easy part of this platting process. But now we have to move on to this area, and this is very, very, very slopey, and we need to tie into bend, which will be a bit of a challenge. And I think that we will terraform this quite liberally. We are going to come in with a fairly large brush strength right here. And with this large brush, I'm going to basically flatten this area out. And I can see that this arterial right here drops down pretty rapidly because those contour lines are pretty tight. So we may want to modify this in just a moment as well. But for now, we're going to pick a couple of common heights like this one, and we will slope to this. And then we'll use our soften terrain tool. And my goal is just going to be to spread these contour lines apart, which will mean that these are more buildable areas than they are right now. And that is considerably better. We are still gonna struggle over here on Dale Street, which is actually University Avenue, so we'll rename that at some point. But I'm gonna back this out. And now that we have this acting as a major arterial, we'll say that the grades were corrected before this road was upgraded. And holy cow, that was a considerable difference right there. And there we go. You can see that that has really spread these contour lines, which makes this a buildable site. So the very first thing I want to do is think about where we're going to tie in to our roads over here and bend. I think we will tie in right here. And then I don't want to overdo it. So we'll go another two blocks down. And then we have one more right here. So this should have helped us retain our road names. Yeah, so we still have Otter Lake and Short Street. And the funny thing is, I think Short Street's gonna become a very long street. So it'll probably end up being a running joke in the community. So we'll do the exact same thing we did over here. We'll try to keep this road the full six units back. And then right here, I think we'll take our existing roads and see where they take us. And where that took us was to a roundabout, which is a great transition point, particularly if you're gonna have a bunch of roads that change direction and orientation. And that's what I think we're gonna do. We'll run a road along the coast here. And that's looking pretty good, but I do wanna build out a couple of blocks right here. And we are going to have a couple of blocks that continue the pattern from across this main arterial. And then maybe a couple along this street, which uh, will create kind of a unique development pattern.
Right here, we also have difficult terrain. We're gonna have one road right here. And then I wanna try to not disrupt the topography all that much. So what I'm gonna do is spread this out a little ways. Same thing right here and same thing right here. And we will grade our road, but nothing else. And I'm not gonna taper the terrain all that much outside of what we do for the roads. And there we go, that should be all of our roads. And before we move on from this, we've got something major that we have to do. We've gotta make sure that all of our road names are still in place. And it looks like all but this one remain. Also, this should be Short Street, so I guess two of them. So there we go, we've got Belmont and Short Street back. And I'm gonna rename this road right off the, oh my goodness. So Short is looping around so much that it is literally everything. So we're gonna end it right here. Oh my goodness, that is so obnoxious. <laughs> and then right here, this is University Avenue. So I'm going to rename this segment University Avenue as well. And you can see how in the future, if this area were to ever urbanize, this would be a very important segment of roadway. And then finally, it's gonna take a long time to get our trees on here. So we're gonna upgrade Main Street and University Avenue right away. And there we go. I'm really, really happy with how this has turned out. This is a layout that mirrors Historic Bend, but respects the terrain, and I think is gonna be flexible enough for us to be able to place some of our larger city service buildings and maybe even some density in the future. But before we do any of that zoning, I wanna do what we're supposed to be doing in today's episode and move on to establishing our bus service. To form a bus system in City Skylines 2, you really only need three things. A bus depot, which is the building where the buses are gonna be coming from, bus stops or shelters where people will wait for their route to arrive, and then the bus line tool, which is how you actually create the route by connecting to each of those stops or shelters. But the most important thing to cite is probably your bus depot. And these are interesting facilities because if you think about it, you probably wouldn't want to live near one of these things because you'd have a ton of buses going by you. So that's noise and vibration and there would be a lot of traffic. So most people would likely lobby against this being in their backyard. So initially I was thinking we will place this thing way over here in the city services complex. And while you wouldn't have formal opposition to the bus uh, depot over here, you'd have a whole nother problem every single bus route would have its beginning, at least its first trip, at this depot. So all of the bus drivers would need to drive over here to the bus depot to get on their bus to drive back to Bend, over to the university, and anywhere else they need to go on their routes. And what this is called is deadheading. And that's really where a bus is operating in non-revenue service. So it's operating where it's not able to make money and not able to serve passengers. So we want to avoid this if at all possible. I know that we are also gonna be building a bus station after we build our depot, and that's gonna be in this general area. So I'm gonna keep those relatively close to one another because uh, that would prevent deadheading. The deadheading for most of the routes would be from here to here, which is pretty darn good. Also, it would allow some residents to walk to this location or maybe even hop on a bus to get to their work at the bus depot. Now, the reason why I think we can get away with this is it's a green field and we're a little ways away from some residential. If this were not a green field, that'd be a problem. We do have this one thing. <laughs> We've got a lot of terrain. So we are gonna try a couple of things. I, I think that for the bus depot, we need a flat pad. So I'm gonna flatten this. This is pretty intense, if we're being completely honest. <laughs> and I wanna see how big this is. Turn off snapping to the road. I think we can fit it in, but we need to do more. So we'll just completely flatten this for now. We'll take it back. And then I want a retaining wall. So I'm gonna back this up a little ways. And I'm hoping that I can just add a node right here, maybe another one right here, and then temporarily sever this. So that should give us the space that we need to place this back here. And there we go. I think that's pretty good. One thing I want to consider right up front, though, is, oh, 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 that's going to bug me. Looks like it's a little bit bumped up in the corner. Oh, I hate to do this, but I'm going to do it. 
I think that's just slightly better. We're gonna, we're gonna give ourselves that one. Now, one thing I wanna do, this is a building that has a couple of upgrades. We could have an extension for a garage. I wanna make sure that this fits and we're gonna pre-grade for this. I don't know that we'll actually build this, but we wanna make sure we don't rule it out. And now we should be able to add this if we want to, to this location. And now I'm gonna to try to fix all the grading around here. And wow, that is one intense retaining wall, but we're gonna go with it. <laughs> so now that we have that, we could just start placing our stops and our routes, but I wanna have a bus station as well. I mentioned that that is one of the primary reasons that we platted this neighborhood out in general. And we're gonna put that right off what is now Walnut Street. We will rename these streets, but that's probably coming in a future episode. For this, I'm gonna disable the snapping once again, and I'll pop this back just a bit. And I figure that we'll do something like this where we're allowing only the buses back here. And actually that's not gonna work because we've got to allow people to park in here. And now that we've added this alleyway through here, I'm gonna bump this over just a little bit so that we have a nice smooth connection through here. And honestly, I'm gonna keep calling mulligans on this. Okay, this is probably way over engineered, but I'm much happier with this. Basically, we're saying that this is a bus only street. If you're gonna park through here, you should be able to still drive on this. And now when the buses exit, it's pretty easy for them to leave. And now we're on to route creation. And the very first route that we need to establish is one connecting Ben to the university. Now for these routes, again, we are going to be placing our stops. And I think for this route, we'll begin at the bus station. And then there's not really a need to stop through here right now but I think we're going to establish the stops and they'll just go past them. And now that we're on the university itself, I think that we'll add a shelter right here in front of what is our school of law. And this will be where we turn around. So now we need to go back and add bus stops on the other side of the road. The only area that I'm a little bit concerned about, I'm just gonna be upfront with you is right here. I don't know that this is a very good stop right now. So right now we've got the bus coming around here. So after this stop, we would round the bend and then head down this way. So we are gonna modify this route. I'm gonna add a stop. I've been going about every three blocks or so. We'll add one right here. And then I'm going to move this stop to right about here. And that is a much better stop because they can queue up a little bit. And now we go on the other side of the road for each of these. The one thing I don't love is similar to when we added our taxi stand over here. We've got this huge node, and as a result, look at how long this uh, this busway is. It's, it's kind of crazy. So I'm gonna double click and add a node and hopefully not break all my zoning. And I did, but it's fine. I will, I will live with that <laughs> because that is much more reasonable. And now let's finish the rest of them. both love flexibility like we have right here and I think it's totally obnoxious too so I really hope that this becomes easier in the future right now it was creating gigantic queuing areas that were just unrealistic so I got this fixed but boy was it frustrating now you might have noticed that I added stops to either side and one of the main reasons that I did that is I think it's really important for all bus routes especially ones that you expect to run all day to have service in both directions. So regardless of when you're working or where you're going or the time of day, you're able to go in either direction, go from your home to your destination and vice versa. The other thing about this is I tried to take the bus and have the route run parallel to important facilities, but not run on those facilities for too long. And that's because I don't want the buses to be subjected to traffic, if at all possible. I don't want them to contribute to the traffic, but I don't wanna make them inconvenient for passengers. So this will be a better pedestrian environment. This would be controversial. I mean, we have bus stops in residential neighborhoods, but that's also where people live. So it's a place for them to get picked up. And we did add these on some of the main streets so that it's not directly in front of someone's house because I know firsthand how controversial that can be. So we'll avoid that. Now we'll begin our first route and we're gonna use our bus line tool. We'll hop right here, click on this, and then this is just going to be as simple as selecting all of these different stops.
And just like that, we have our first bus route. Now there are a couple of small things I wanna change. Obviously right here, the bus kind of zigzagging across is not wonderful. So I'm going to add a waypoint. I just love this. This is one of the very best features in City Skylines 2 in my estimation. The ability to add waypoints gives you the ability to have bus routes that make sense. So just love that. And I wanna take a look. There was one other location. Most of this ended up working fine, but we have this one way set right here. And I don't think that I realized how difficult I made it to navigate around here. And the bus is really demonstrating that right now for us. So what I'm gonna do is make this street bi-directional and that resolves all of our issues and maybe gets the, uh, the residents of the community on board with the routes as well. This is the sort of thing that does happen when you're planning routes. You'll end up going through and seeing where signals are so a bus can make a left-hand turn. You'll take a look at roads and how they line up and maybe make slight modifications so that your bus route routes are gonna be on time and very legible and make a lot of sense. And I think that this does the trick. And now I do wanna take a look at this route. It's our very first route. We've got 20 stops. It says 13 buses. Now I, I'm really concerned about that because I think that this only has 25. Yeah, we have 15 of our 25 vehicles in use right now. So I think we're gonna add on the garage extension right away. This will give us another 10 buses, and then we'll have to modify this route most likely because there's just way too many vehicles on it. I'm gonna let it go for now though, and we will add our second route. I think that we're probably gonna have three in total. We're gonna have one more that basically goes to East Bend through Highland and Barksdale and meets up somewhere near the rear of the university. And then we'll have one more that goes out to the industrial park. And that's probably all that we can handle right now from a bus capacity standpoint and from the, the standpoint of, of actually having a reasonable bus system for a community of this size. So for this one, rather than going through Bend, I think that we'll take this route and basically send it down these couple of stops. And then I'm gonna add one more stop right here in anticipation of future development. And then we're gonna cruise through the rural area. And you might think we should add a stop here, but we actually can't. You can't add a stop to the side of a highway. And this is actually pretty realistic because if you were, at least it, I don't think you could. Oh my goodness, it lets you? That is terrible. <laughs> so normally when you have a bus stop in a, in a rural area like this or a, a transition zone, what you would see is a little segment of urbanity added where maybe you get a sidewalk, curb and gutter or just a short stretch because otherwise there's some real accessibility concerns. So we're not gonna do that because it's, uh, it's not reasonable in my mind. We're gonna send that and have that run back here through the neighborhood. Now, this has been an interesting little experiment here because we've got a really broken up roadway network through here that will improve over time, but for now is pretty challenging. So we've gone with maybe some suboptimal <laughs> configurations. And one of the places where we're gonna struggle the most is we're entering the campus right here and we need to find a way for the bus to turn around. So this kind of reminds me of the University of Colorado at Denver where I went to grad school. We had this area where buses could queue up and then a roundabout where they could turn around. So I think we'll do something like that. We'll add on right here. And now you'd see the buses queuing right here and then they would turn around right here and be able to serve the opposite direction. So just like the last time, we'll go around and we'll add stops to the other side of the road because we want bi-directional service. Now we are going to add uh, this route and this is, uh, we're gonna reuse some of these stops. So this is where maybe you'd want the queuing zones to be a little bit larger when you reuse these stops, but I'm not overly concerned. I don't think that we're gonna have so many buses that it's gonna be a problem. Now, interestingly, it seems like this route needs more work with waypoints. So I just wanna mirror this same pattern that we have before 
and keep the buses all on one street if at all possible. And then there's stuff like this where I don't understand why the bus decided to deviate, but it did. And it's doing it in a couple spots. It's really bizarre. There we go. I think those were the main locations where it wasn't exactly logical. So I do want to mention just a couple of things I've done on this route that are maybe a little bit unique. I tried to focus on paths. So where we have path connections, I've added some of these bus stops. So maybe not as much right here. I tried to get near the density. But right here, for instance, we have our bus stops right next to this path. So if you were anywhere along the path, you'd have really easy access to the bus route. I've done the exact same thing right here, right here. I focused on this path. So if you were in this neighborhood, you could cross this. I'm going to add a signal here now, and that will prioritize that pedestrian movement to the bus stop. And then right here, we've done the same thing. And I'm once again going to upset motorists by adding a signal here, but I think it's super necessary. And then our final stop right here, it doesn't really prioritize the path as much, but it's the first one in the neighborhood. Now for this route, we are looking at 12 buses. Holy cow, 548 passengers on bus line one. That was unexpected. I did not expect that to have that strong of utilization, but we're gonna take it. But I'm seeing 49% utilization, so I think that we are going to bump this down a little bit. So we'll go 10 vehicles, and I'm gonna lower the price because I don't believe that buses should necessarily be a money-making endeavor. <laughs> so uh, I think it's, it's something where it's getting people off the road, and that's where you're making your money on road maintenance. It's also a vital public service. So this will also boost up the number of passengers that we have. We're gonna rename this. This will be the University Bend Line. And now for our second route, we'll make, make this East Bend University. And there we go, two very different colors. Now, interestingly for our second route, as soon as we remove the buses from the first one, they just threw it all at the second route. So I think we will lower the fare here. And I think that this route will have significantly less utilization. So we are going to drop the number of vehicles down as low as it will let us go. And then for our last route, we're going over to the industrial park and we should be able to reuse stops through here. We'll run down the exact same direction that we've been going. But the big difference is rather than going towards our train station, we're probably going to try to find a way past our high school and then basically immediately come over here. And this is a tough one because we could have a whole bunch of looping and circulation through here. We are probably going to go that route. I don't love this. This will be a really circuitous route. But to be able to provide service here, I think it's what we have to do. So we'll add one stop over here, one right here, and then we'll have a couple of stops within this complex. And this won't be completely symmetrical here because I want to make sure that we're hitting up as many destinations as possible, but it'll be fairly close. And you can kind of see that right here, what I'm imagining is the route comes up, loops around, stops here, then loops back around here and goes back that way. So we're not reaching everywhere, but we're reaching a pretty large swath. The only thing, we've got all these city services. We've got to call them all again on this route already. We will make this more symmetrical. So I'm going to add a stop on this side of the road. And then we can't have all these city services and not serve them. That would never fly. And there we go. That should be all of the bus stops that we need. So let's put our route together and this will be very similar to the other ones. We will begin right here. And there we go. We've got our final bus route. We're going to name this one Bend Copper Valley. Now, I do want to adjust some waypoints because as this is run, I've noticed a couple of other odd spots like right here. And another one was right here. And now that we've adjusted those routes, I think we have pretty good coverage throughout this entire area and things should really begin to improve. Now, I know that in some of these areas we have transit service on the same street serving the same stops. And that's completely fine because not everyone is going to be going from this bus station to the end of the line. Some people are going to be going from the high school to Bend. And when you have multiple buses on that same route, 
that means that your frequency along that route is significantly higher. So you might not even need to think about waiting for a bus. It'll just be there. So I like doing that. I do want to adjust that last route though. And then we've got to add a bit of inner city service. And you can see for the Bend to Copper Valley, it once again threw kind of a crazy number of buses out there, 17 buses. And it actually wants to throw 21. We just don't have enough vehicles. So we'll drop this down to 10. And again, drop that ticket price down to two bucks. And then just thinking about this, we've got 10 buses on the Bend to University route. I think I'm actually gonna drop this down as low as it'll go. And I'm gonna completely subsidize the ticket. Now, the thought here is that the university may actually take these university routes and completely subsidize them for the students. And maybe it's not a total subsidy. It's probably coming out of their tuition, but uh, reasonably that does happen quite often. So we've added that subsidy to both of those routes. And then the last thing I want to do, and the reason why I wanted to preserve some capacity is I want to create those external inner city routes. So we'll add that right about here. And this is going to be a route that we connect up way out here at the edge of the map to Clearwater County. And then I'm going to send this way over here to Duluth. And then I'm going to end this way over here back at our bus station. And I just want to make sure, yeah, it wants to throw a ton of vehicles at that. We'll throw one at it, and that stinks. There's no way to go any lower than that. We are going to have a shortage of buses, and I'm, that is, that means that we might not be able to do that just yet. So my fear is that we end up taking our buses off our normal routes. So that we could do some quick math. Yeah, we, we don't have enough buses. So what I'm going to do, we're going to delete this route. And we'll send this only to Clearwater County because that's the only place we currently do not have inner city service. Our passenger train connects us to both Duluth and Nicolay Bay. So this should do the trick for us. Now I feel like we've got to rename these because it's Clearwater County or, or recolor them. And now looking at the number of vehicles, it's still seven. That is brutal. Well, we'll take a look at our other routes. I think that this is important enough because it's a college town that we need to see if we can get this to work. And it says we have 33 out of 35 because we probably have a vehicle in maintenance. So that is one of the things you do have to think about is that maintenance aspect of this. Well, one thing I do want to do, I want to look at this and we'll see if we can make Chuckles a little bit more happy. And we'll add a taxi stop over here to have some synergy in between our taxi facility and the bus station. And now I'm really curious about what this is going to do to our high rent problem. We haven't added any of the zoning that would potentially resolve our unemployment issue, but we have linked people to jobs. So I'm going to let this run for a couple of minutes and see if things improve. Now, I've let this run for a few minutes, and to me, it looks just about the same. And truthfully, the buses were never going to solve all of our problems. I think that we've got to keep growing the city. We've still got a strong demand for jobs, and I'm guessing if we look here, our unemployment rate is actually higher than it was the last time that we looked. We're now at 8.1%. So we clearly need more jobs. We clearly need more housing. We need more of everything if we want to get this under control. I do want to take a look at our utilization of our routes, though. We've got over 3,000 people per month using this, which is pretty outstanding. And looking at a per line level, our original Route 1 Bend to the University is our most popular. Not surprising, this also connects up to our train station. And then we've got Bend Copper Valley doing all right as well. Same thing with the other university route. The one that's not doing very well is the inner city route. And I'm wondering if that will improve once we zone around it. So now I do think that we should try to address some of these high rent issues with a little bit of zoning and rural development. Now I've been going back and forth on just how much I want to fill in this new area. And I'm starting to lean towards filling it all in, but I wanna begin first with our rural development. And I want to begin there because we're going to have some farms and I'm hoping that these farms allow us to kind of bridge our gap with our unemployment a bit. So we are going to add a rural road along the side of the river. And I think that we'll just run that. We'll start this off as a normal city street so that we can figure out how far away from the side we are. And then I'll convert this to be a highway. And then finally, I think that we're going to take this bridge and, you know, we have this set up so nicely to be an arterial, but I just don't think it's the right approach just yet. So we're going to downgrade this to be a normal highway. And that to me makes a ton more sense. Now through here, we'll just have a couple of farms and a couple of homes. 
and I will attempt to add in our survey boundaries. And this next one's gonna be a little bit of a trick because we've purchased tiles. So to resolve this, we'll purchase one more. And now I'll actually be able to see where that road should be. And now we'll add a couple of homes. I think we'll go with our European low density. I feel like they'll fit the context of this area a little bit better. And then before we forget about it, I'm gonna add some water pipes underneath the road, right where they belong. And we'll do the exact same thing with power. Now, there's an interesting thought here. I've seen a number of questions asking if it actually makes all that much sense in a rural environment to add the power and water underneath the road, or if it should be on the side. And I think you can make a very strong argument that it probably should be on the side but it does complicate things and we upgrade utilities. So I'm gonna keep putting them underneath the road. Um, and in an urban environment, you'd absolutely expect to see it underneath the road. Now here I am gonna light this bridge for power and then we'll run our electric cables on the side of the road. And now our rural environment should have power. Let's add just a couple of farms and let's see what we actually need. And honestly, it looks like chickens or livestock rather, and vegetables are what we need the most. So I think we'll add two livestock farms and maybe one vegetable farm. I'm kind of regretting the way that I built this, so we are going to call a bit of a mulligan. And I decided to make this one a vegetable farm because it's fairly small, but I think for these last two, we will make them once again, livestock farms. And I'm gonna back these off from these main roads through here. And there we go, we've got our couple of farms and our couple of homes and everything is beginning to fill back in. I wanna see how many jobs these are actually providing. This one is 19, 18 here, six and 24. Let's see what that's done to our unemployment rate. We've actually dropped it by a full percent, which I think is pretty impressive. And now I wanna switch gears and come back over here and talk about the game plan. There's gonna be a couple of corridors where we have density and a couple of areas where we have density. I'm thinking that along Main Street right here, we're gonna basically have no zoning. Then when we get right here, we'll have a bit more density, think row homes, maybe one apartment or low rent building, and maybe some of our office and commercial in this area as well. Right here, we're gonna have a park. We'll have a bit of zoning along this part of university, but over here, we'll have none. And then I wanna have a bit more density and some employment uses around our bus facility. Everything else, will be single family residential and over time, maybe it will improve. So let's begin with those higher density corridors and we will go right along Main Street where it turns into this two unit wide segment and we'll start out here. And I think we're gonna mirror this on what is now Anchor Street as well. So this will be a, kind of the, the most dense portion of this neighborhood. And then we've got this kind of awkward gap back here. And what I think we'll do is we'll have one parking lot and then maybe a fake park back here or some sort of amenity for folks in these uh, different commercial and in office buildings to come and take a rest. And by place for them to take a rest, I mean, we're gonna add a playground there because it's the only thing that'll fit. <laughs> I think the only other one would be one of these outdoor gyms, and that feels really strange to put there as well. So either way, it's gonna be a little bit awkward. This We're doing the best with what we have. Now, we do have some terrain challenges here that we didn't necessarily account for. So I am going to adjust this right now. And that's much better in my estimation. Now, I think we'll go a bit further back with these row homes as well. We'll switch the orientation and have an alleyway right here. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing over here as well. However, I'm gonna use this alleyway as kind of the guide to remind myself where the terrain gets too wild. And now we may call a mulligan or two. Actually, we'll just add in a couple of these right here. I wanna have one low rent building and then a couple of medium density buildings as well. 
and we're just building this area up as a more dense environment. And now we've got this area over here with our bus station. And I, again, I think that we neither need density around here or destinations. And I think destinations are probably be the de direction that we go. that will be offices and maybe even a commercial area. High visibility right here. So I would think that commercial properties would like this. The problem is we're not gonna provide direct access to this, which would make it a little bit less likely in some of these areas that commercial would take an interest in this. And with what I just mentioned in mind, we'll have commercial along what is now Briarwood. And then right here on Walnut, we're gonna switch gears and have office. I decided to call a slight mulligan here right along Rosewood Street. We are going to orient some more commercial and office along this. Again, still a huge need for us. And now I want to add some sort of a plaza through here so that we have some sort of amenity that folks in, that are working in this area could enjoy. And the large plaza is just a little bit too large, so we'll need to go with something smaller, but that's completely fine. But I do want to angle this to try to make it a bit more of, a, of an amenity in this area. So what we'll do is add in a pedestrian street diagonally, and then we can place our park right on there. And honestly, this makes me really hope that at some point in the future, we get some smaller pedestrian roads because this is just really intense. I'm going to probably call a mulligan here and do something like that. Even though I don't want the road there, this is probably the best that we can do. And there's one more area I want to focus on, university right here. And I'm thinking that we're going to have some commercial office and maybe just a little bit of residential along here. And I think that'll be about the extent of that. And now for the rest of this, we're gonna go with some fairly low density residential through here. But I do wanna add a couple of parks first, some really nice neighborhood amenities. So we have to do this in mostly flat areas because of where the way that this will terraform. And we'll add a city park right there and then some small parks throughout as well. And then we'll add some playgrounds because we can always sneak these in without too many problems from a terraforming standpoint. And then we have a new neighborhood. We have to have a new dog park. So we'll add that right here behind Underhill. And then one more small park right here and we should be good. So for the rest of this, I'm just gonna try to respect the terrain and add in some of our North American low density homes. We aren't gonna stagger the zoning here. I'm gonna just fill these in and over time as we redevelop, that's when we'll begin to change the depth of the lots and things of that nature. And there we go. We've added residential to most of this with the exception of this area. I want to give this area some more thought and we may even need to separate these out. I want to let this fill in for just a moment and we'll see how it looks. And now that things have filled in, we can see that there are some terrain challenges here. So we are likely going to want to back out the zoning just a little bit on some of these lots. And honestly, this makes me really wish that we could actually see the contour view when we are zoning, but that's not something that we're able to do right now. But at least I can get an approximation when the buildings are in place. So uh, it's a little bit reactionary if we're being if we're being totally upfront, but it is going to do the trick for us. And honestly, there weren't that many lots that are too terribly bad. So I think it's okay making a couple of changes here and there. And then as we wait for this to finish up, there's one more thing that we have to do. We're starting to see some lack of high skill labor uh, signs pop up at our farms. And that makes me think, yeah, our school is totally full. I'm guessing the one over here is not. Yeah. So we are going to adjust our districts just a little bit. We don't have a district over here just yet. And I've basically created three new neighborhoods right here. We'll need names for those. So if you have any naming ideas, drop them in the comments below. But I'm also going to redo Bend generally. So Bend currently reaches all the way out 
to this area right here. And right now it just doesn't make any more sense. So we are going to reconstruct this. And there we go. I've broken this up into a couple more districts as well. The only one that I know we want to name today is going to be downtown Ben. Outside of that, we need names for all of these. And if you have a name idea, drop the name of the neighborhood and then the proposed name that you have. And in a future episode, we will get these updated. Now, the whole reason that we did this is now we can take this school and assign it to operate in specific districts, such as downtown and really this portion of Ben. And now for this other side, what I think we'll do is assign these to our other elementary school. And doing that got our student, well, it's really close to capacity, but it's, it's still under for a moment anyway. This school still looking good. So that might, we might need to take a look at this one more time. And I'm wondering if we need to grab another district or two. So now that elementary school at the university is for basically everyone except for Cherry Brook and Downtown Bend. And I'm hoping that that starts to see, it, we start, we're starting to see more students at that elementary school as a result. Ultimately, we will need another one soon. We're gonna need a lot of services. The city's really growing. But that sounds like a problem for another day. Right now, what I think we need to do is do a little bit of landscaping and detailing. To begin, I wanna fix some of the coast right here. You can see that it looks pretty unnatural and we've got some kind of strange cliffs here right now. So we'll just extend these out. And then I'm gonna taper them. And I'll leave some imperfection, but I think that looks a ton better. We'll do the exact same thing over here. And I like that a ton better. Now, for all of our landscaping, there's one thing I want to focus on today, and that is having less do more. So I think I've had a tendency to overdo it. So what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to restrain myself, focus on landscaping in the areas where it makes the most sense. So this park right here near our bus depot, near our bus station, this park right here, and then along University and Main Street. And then we will brush, not spray trees in other areas because I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to make it look overly manicured. I've removed trees in all the locations I'm going to focus on for landscaping, really detailed landscaping. Everything else is where we will brush things in. Before we brush things in, though, I want to add a few paths to flesh out some of these areas, particularly in areas like this where we don't have a lot of connectivity. This could get added in the future, but for now, we will have a path. Now that we've got all of this landscaping worked out, let's pop on over here before we brush the rest of our landscaping. And then over here, rather than trying to draw lines of trees, I've just kind of drawn plumes of bushes and trees. So hopefully that ends up looking a lot better. And then through the rest of this area, we are going to just brush some trees, not spray them, brush some trees. This time, I also want to focus on having fewer species of trees. I think I've added too many in some locations and it's ended up looking busy. So we're gonna have mainly spruce, hickory, and oak throughout here. And there we go. We have a nicely landscaped new neighborhood, a series of neighborhoods. And I think there's only one more thing left to do. Let's take inventory of what we've done with a brief city tour.
before we wrap things up for the day, I'm going to make a couple of fixes based on your feedback, and then we'll take a look at the overall transit utilization. The first fix is right here at the district that we created in the previous episode, where a number of you recommended that we rename this Railroad Street Street again. And it's some sort of a planning error or something like that. And truthfully, I absolutely adore it. Thank you all so much for the suggestion. And for our next suggestion, we come way back over here to this long lake near our farms and the suburbs that we built a couple episodes back. And Jarl Breadmaker suggests that we rename this Lake Inferior. And I absolutely love that. First of all, this doesn't have a name. And second of all, it's just a whimsical play on Lake Superior. I love it. And behold, Lake Inferior. And honestly, I love this. I imagine Nick King naming this and getting a real kick out of it. Thank you so much for your suggestion, Jarl. And though there were a number of lovely suggestions for the different townships out here, I think we're going to hold off on renaming all the townships until we have names for these as well. So drop all of your names down below. I already have some townships selected and we'll rename them all at once. Let's take a look at our transit utilization. Would you believe that? We have almost 12,000 citizens per month using the bus. Looking at our individual routes, utilization is all right. It looks like our Bend to University line is our most successful, 346 passengers. East Bend to University is a close second. That kind of surprises me, but I'm happy to see it. And then our Bend to Copper Valley line is third. This is our longest route with our most buses. It does have a lot of passengers, but there's still a lot more capacity, which is why our usage is as low as it is. Now, interestingly, our inner city line is not doing all that well. It makes me wonder if that's a good use of our resources. I think we're gonna need to keep an eye on that. But for now, I think that we're going to leave it here. And I've really enjoyed bringing this episode to you. I know that we've done a lot today, and I really hope that you've enjoyed it. If you did, please consider hitting the like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I want to thank you for your time today. It's an absolute privilege to bring these videos to you, and I really appreciate your time. There's a million things that you could have been doing. You decided to hang out with me, and I appreciate that, and I appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I can't wait to see you next time. Take care, and bye-bye.